Hello, my name is James Treby. I'm the CTO of Forge Nano, and I'm here today to give you a quick introduction to Forge Nano and a little bit about what we do, uh, particularly in batteries and about some of our R&D tools. I'll start by saying that we were founded in 2013 with a vision to become a world leader in innovative material solutions by enabling atomic layer deposition, or ALD, in every way possible at a commercial scale to enable the next generation of advanced materials. Last year, we merged with ALD Nano Solutions and acquired the technology suite from Sundu Technologies to secure a position as the market leader in ALD for powders, as well as the technology leader in ALD for objects and semiconductors. Our team has also expanded to about 60, and we're headquartered in Thornton, Colorado, where our facility is well poised to accommodate our continuing growth. We have a global reach with regard to our investors, partners, and customers who rely on us as an end-to-end -end material solution provider. Uh, so what I mean here is that uh, we do everything from ALD as a service at the milligram scale all the way up to kiloton scale, uh, providing robust and flexible R&D equipment to accommodate just about any application. Uh, and finally, and of course, as our primary business model, selling uh, equipment and licensing uh, selling and licensing commercial ALD equipment. Shown here are uh, just a few images and renderings of our equipment. Uh, we are serving all four ALD uh, segments of powder, object, semiconductor, and roll-to-roll -roll ALD with both R&D and commercial equipment. Our R&D systems are quickly becoming the standard in the field uh, due to their ease of use, programmability, and repeatability of experiments. Uh, as well as robust design, uh, which is needed for a lot of the people who use them. Um, the Forge Nano commercial equipment is also being quickly adopted into many different fields uh, and may even be serving you today, whether you know it or not. Uh, we design and build all of our equipment in-house based on our own efforts, uh, as we are varied about use of our own equipment, not only for general R&D, but to ensure that all of the appropriate testing has been done to deliver uh, quality product to our customers. If you've not heard of ALD, that's all right. Um, we did not invent the, the method. It, it's actually been around for something like 60 years. Um, and I'll, but I'll give you a quick, quick breakdown here. The, the basic, basic concept of ALD is it's a method of depositing an ultra-thin conformal coating onto just about any material or substrate. The beauty of ALD is that it's the most controllable of all the coating techniques, uh, with layers often thinner than even a nanometer being applied, which is not line of sight limited. Um, <clears throat> or in other words, geometry is not necessarily an issue for ALD. Because the methodology involves self-limiting reactions, you can grow layers uh, to your exact desired thickness with excellent control of conformality in chemistry. Shown here is a great periodic table from AtomicLimits.com, which shows all the different coding types available by ALD. To summarize, you can think of ALD as an elegant method to improve materials that has only recently become affordable through the commercialization effort for Geno. Shown at the center of this slide is a word cloud to capture just a handful of the various itties uh, which ALD can control. Uh, whether it is flowability for additive manufacturing or conductivity of various sorts uh, for energy storage, activity for catalysis, or phobicity for barrier coatings, ALD can be applied very generally because it's a means to control surface properties. Uh, what I'm showing on the outer perimeter is a subset of all the various markets in which ALD has demonstrated some sort of improved material or device performance. To highlight, here you can see a simplified set of various application-specific data which demonstrates the benefit of ALD. In the realm of batteries, we often enable higher energy density by safely enabling a higher upper cutoff voltage, faster charging by keeping SEI growth at bay, and even lowering cost in comparison to other coding techniques currently being used. Uh, here I'm showing some recent data obtained uh, from testing 40 amp hour cells, where ALD is showing about a 40% improvement in cycle life. Uh, other types of benefits via ALD shown here are, are increased durability of DNOx catalyst, reduced oxidation of Ti-64 for additive manufacturing, and oxidation resistance for multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Uh, we're also finding ALD can be obviously very useful and, and beneficial in display technologies um, while lowering costs and that ALD for pharmaceuticals and more generally just bio type applications is growing widely in interest since we've now paved the path for commercialization of ALD in those areas. 
So uh, in addition to that brief overview, I also wanted to just give a little bit extra of a deep dive into both some of our battery uh, data, as well as a uh, quick overview of some of our, uh, just a couple of our systems. So in the realm of batteries, ALD improves just by every aspect. Uh, most commonly, we get a lot of attention for cathodes, anodes, uh, and electrolytes and or separators, depending on if you want liquid or uh, solid state batteries. Um, you know, when it comes to the cathode, um, you know, enabling higher energy density is, like, as I mentioned before, possible by enabling higher upper cutoff voltage. So when you can cycle to a higher voltage, you can get more capacity out of your battery. Typically, if you try to do this, you, you ruin your cycle life, but when you put ALD on there, um, it does not ruin your cycle life. And we've got a few examples shown here uh, with popular cathodes, uh, NMC811 and, and 622, where we uh, double or even triple the cycle life um, when cycled to 4.4 volts, and this is just gives us higher energy density and, you know, the, the cycle life we still need. This is the case with any flavor of, of cathode for lithium ion batteries, it could be LCO, LMNO, you name it. There's always a benefit with ALD, right? We're controlling the surface. Um, or any flavor of NMC for that matter as well. Uh, when it comes to anodes, you know, same same basic concept. Uh, ALD is there. It's, it, you're engineering your SDI, so you avoid this, this other one that you can't really control very well and causes all sorts of higher resistance. Uh, in this case, we enabled a higher reversible capacity uh, via that you know, lowered resistance. And we often find um, that this enables a much faster charge uh, capability. So, so fast charge in particular to, to uh, electric vehicles is very important. Uh, and that's exactly what we're addressing. And, and feel free to Google us. You know, we're, we're in the midst of a number of different MOUs with graphite companies for this exact matter. Uh, last and certainly not least is safety. You know, um, again, just some example data about ALD improving uh, safety via either slower self-heating or the reduced overall reaction. Um, in this case, you know, some of those 40 amp hour cells I mentioned earlier uh, underwent an overcharge test and passed with a UCAR rating of three instead of six. For, you know, uh, six being for their un the identical uncoated counterpart uh, cell versus the ALD cell that they got a three, right? This is very important to, to a number of EV companies. Um, basic message here though, one example of how ALD improves safety for lithium ion batteries. So um, switching gears over to some of the equipment that makes it all possible. Um, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of equipment to go over, but I'm just gonna go over some of the powder related equipment today that, that uh, you know, in which the R&D is done on, on fluidized beds, on rotary equipment, and, and even some of our scaling as well. So you can see here uh, a fluidized bed or the basic uh, design concepts of a fluidized bed. You know, this is just a, a teaser of, of, of a taste uh, of what we, we try to work through to make sure that we can do good R&D, that when we apply ALD to some of these different materials for different applications, we can do effectively uh, and ensure very high quality. Uh, we go through quite a, quite a bit of uh, rigor to make sure that um, the way we operate is consistent, reliable, uh, and repeatable. Um, on the right, you can hopefully see the moving fluidized bed and, and ensuring good mixing in this particular powder. This is our um, workhorse R&D system, the Prometheus. Uh, these systems have a lot of capability. They uh, can do just about anything, you know, uh, in terms of R&D and just about any substrate. They're particularly tuned for powders. And, um, uh, you know, the nice part, you go to that atomiclimits.com and you can do just about anything there, which is pretty exciting. Uh, these tools are very robust and, and very user friendly. Uh, another way that, that we do ALD uh, at an R&D scale is with a rotary tool. So, um, you know, lots of powders out there, lots of different properties. There's a huge difference between powder for additive manufacturing, it's very dense, uh, and powder for, 
you know, high, high surface area carbons like catalysts that uh, behave completely differently and very, very low density, right? And so this requires a number of different um, mixing methods to effectively uh, apply ALD uh, and make sure you did a good job and, and it meets theoretical expectations and, and performs well. Uh, the rotary tools offer a number of different benefits, uh, particular for extrudates, small objects, uh, things like that. You can actually see ALD happening through the viewport, which is nice. Um, and this works out really well, especially for applications in which R&D uh, type powders are, are very difficult to make in large quantities. So when you have lots of those quantities, though, um, the nice part about the rotary tools is they scale up very readily. Um, this is a piece of equipment that we have. It's called Lethos. We sell these in very many different sizes, up to hundreds and thousands of kilos capacity. Uh, they're very effective tools um, and uh, do a very good job of ensuring good powder movement, uh, very flexi flexible and versatile for uh, how thick an ALD layer you want to apply. Um, and, you know, in comparison to some of our other techniques, you know, has, has a number of different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, this would be batch ALD versus some of our other equipment that would be semi-continuous or continuous, but we'll save those for another time. Um, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. This is this has just been a, a quick uh, overview of just some of our technology, but if you're interested in learning more about product services, IP, partnership, investment opportunities, uh, we're all ears and we're happy to talk about our equipment. We're very proud of it and we appreciate you being here and listening. Thank you.